Okay, I want to finish this uh, section of the course, uh, before we go into something else anyway, uh, talking about something called Telegon's theorem. Not very well known, but I think it's quite a fascinating theorem. Um, uh, it, it says the following thing. So given a graph, it's quite very easy to state. It's almost it's one of those theorems that's almost so trivial you think it doesn't have any content to it, but it's amazing. Um, given a graph um, with an incidence matrix, let's say connected graph, or with incidence matrix uh, A, and any vector of potential differences E is equal to AX for some X. So that's your vector of potentials. And any set of edge variables, so you've got a, some node variables encapsulated in X, and now you've got some edge variables with uh, divergence F at the nodes, then X, sorry, so then E transpose W is equal to minus X transpose F. Look at that. Look at th that's quite a surprising statement if you think about it. It says the two kind of dot products are the same, but think about it. The left hand side is a dot product of two m dimensional vectors, while the right hand side is the dot product of two n dimensional vectors. Now, do you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to put a, a prime on the w and the f because I want to emphasize that we've been thinking all along in this course so far that, you, you know, you, you can get uh, E, the vector of potential differences from the X, and then you can define a current, which are the edge variables based on the E. But in this theorem, there is no connection at all between the node variables and the edge variables. They don't even need to be relevant to the same, if you're thinking of the graph as a circuit, they don't even need to be the same circuit. They don't even need to be any quantities that uh, are related through through the circuit. So, um, you know, uh, they could even be the currents and the uh, potential differences of two completely different flows in the same circuit, two completely different um, uh, yeah, currents in the same circuit. So in particular, um, so uh, let's do an example. So, so well, let's just prove it first. It's very easy to prove. Um, let's look at the left hand side. E, of course, is A transpose X, okay, which implies that E transpose W prime is A X transpose W prime. But that's equal to x transpose a transpose w prime. But this thing is minus f prime. Done. Well, let's just use it uh, in an example, see, see one of the many ramifications that it has. Uh, remember the dissipation function that I defined that was associated uh, with a circuit. I called it e of x. And then remember I proved Richelieu's theorem. It was defined to be x transpose times k times x. And if you remember, I can write that as the following. Okay, I can write it like that. Where of course this, if I can think of it as a circuit, uh, was, was the by Ohm's law the vector of currents. And then this of course is minus E transpose. Okay. Now, Consider a two-point source sink current. So I've got a plus or minus node, plus node at unit voltage, and then minus node at zero voltage. Then the F, and I'm not even going to tell you what size the graph is, but we just know, let's put these plus or minus nodes in the first position, then the F associated that by that would be CF minus CF, uh, and then the rest of zeros for all the other KCL nodes, okay? And um, Telegon's theorem okay, Telegon's theorem says that 
uh, the energy dissipation, right, is minus, well, I've, I, this isn't Telegon's theorem. This is just from up here. But now Telegon tells me that this is X transpose F. Okay, by Telegon. Okay, but F is mostly zero except for the CF and minus CF corresponding to the plus node and minus node. So what we have there is CF X plus minus CF X minus because all of the other components look of F are zero, so we don't get anything else. But then X plus is one and this is zero. So look what I've just derived for you. Isn't it amazing? The effective conductance of a two point plus minus source sink current, the effective conductance is precisely equal to the dissipation in the circuit. Isn't it amazing? And it follows as an almost trivial consequence of Telegon's theorem here. Okay, so uh, uh, the effective conductance is indeed another way to work out the dissipation at minimum, by the way. This was the dissipation at minimum, because remember, the dissipation uh, is, is, is an arbitrary function of node potentials, and you have no requirements on those node potentials. We know from Dirichlet's uh, principles that it's minimized, right, at the solution that satisfies Kirchhoff laws and Ohm's laws, and uh, the minimum value of the dissipation will be given by the effective conductance. Remarkable fact.